So, hello everyone and welcome to this amazing tutorial that I decided to make because I can hope it will be of use to you and um, enjoy. So this is the picture that we'll be making and regrettably it's not really a smooth process all along but at least you'll get to see the, all the mistakes I'm making so you know what not to do at the very least which I guess is valuable information and yeah I decided against editing all the bad parts out because they are part of the process for better or worse so I guess there's something to be learned out of them as well and here we go I guess I should introduce myself, I think. My name is Yuri, I've been working in the game industry for the last 10 years probably. And right now I'm working as a character artist and even though I always model at work, I really like painting so that's what I'm going to talk about to you today in this tutorial I may have moves <coughs> so anyway as you can see I started by doing some studies to get myself familiar with the subject and yeah what I had in the beginning was just the idea that I want to make a dog that's some kind of warrior of course medieval because that's right in the middle of my comfort zone and um, who doesn't like to work in their comfort zone so yeah I started by doing some proportion studies which were, weren't really diverse but I had a fairly specific idea of what I wanted to achieve so I like to think that it was just a matter of fine-tuning the idea and not lack of imagination though I guess we'll never know so anyway right now you can see me trying out different designs I find it easiest to experiment with design in this form by like in really really small thumbnails really basic because this way you don't have to bother yourself with drawing technique, accuracy, perspective, shading and all those things that make a really good picture but don't necessarily contribute to design and that's how I usually start my designs at least that's how I usually should start my designs because when I don't it usually doesn't produce anything good so yeah I made a few versions and in the end I decided to pick the parts I like best from all the versions and look at this <laughs> there is a shield and some spears which will get dropped but what you gonna do and now I've started experimenting with different poses what you don't see is that on my other monitor I have a big reference sheet full of various photos, drawings and sculpts and whatever I thought might be relevant to the process so the things that I'm using, the various design elements, poses and whatnot they aren't coming purely from my imagination mostly I'm just stealing from real life and as I'm guessing most people will tell you, this is what you should do. So now that we have, I guess, no, not solid, but we have some idea of what we want to make, I usually proceed by hmm, putting the tiny thumbnail somewhere on screen and starting to make a, a bigger sketch so that yeah, I can get on with the final work 
and since this time there was a vague idea that this character will be made for for a friend of mine to turn into a 3D model at some point hypothetical point in time so that's why I decided to paint it from both sides front and back just like they do in the big studios Ooh. <coughs> and so I'm sketching it from front and back you're gonna have to excuse me but I'm guessing that what follows from the tutorial is more or less just me narrating what the, what I'm doing that's not going to be terribly exciting because there's a lot of trial and error and a lot of mistakes that I make early on in the process that I only see during later parts of it I'm guessing that it's more or less natural to the process I hope it is still I, I hope someday I'll be good enough to avoid making the mistakes in the beginning but so far they are unavoidable what I'm trying to say is that in case you're someone that's just starting out don't feel bad about making mistakes because as cliched as it might sound, this is how you learn. You have to make your own mistakes. At least I've never seen someone who managed to learn from other people's mistakes. As they say should be done because... Well, it's one thing to tell you that the stove is hot and you shouldn't touch it, but it's a completely other thing to touch it for yourself and see that it is really hot and kind of drives the point home so I'm guessing it's the same with everything <coughs> so right now you can see me just blocking in basic colors and shapes you saw that I start with a really loose line sketch because I find that line is the the easiest way of putting your intentions on paper, so to speak. It has the, the most immediate feedback, in my opinion. Because you, you can convey a lot more information with just a few simple lines, design and structure-wise, than you can with mm, just painterly spots. I guess there are people that can do it with painterly spots, but I'm thinking I'm not one of them. And the second ago you saw me just sketching, yeah, just as I did now, sketching somewhere to the side trying to figure out the structure and the direction of the parts of the body. This, this is some really basic stuff that I still do and it's it's things it's a thing that everyone should do actually because I used to be trapped in this mindset that I'm too cool to do all those basic things measuring and sketching and whatnot and so I didn't do them and I'm thinking that this led me to bah waste quite a lot of time without making any noticeable progress I like to think it isn't as bad but it probably is so you should really put your egos aside and do all those basic things because they are important and people tell you to do them for a reason so as you can see my way of working isn't nothing really special or magical I just put a blob of basic color then I choose a, <clears throat> a shadow color and try to more or less outline the shadow 
I try to pay attention to the core shadow, although I don't always succeed, but it's a good thing to keep in mind. So as you can see on the on the arms, for example, I've marked the shadow areas, the darkest parts of it are the core shadow parts. And then I usually introduce, I, I try to introduce uh, some secondary secondary colors or just some other colors to, to put some variety in there as as you can see actually on the shorter parts of the armor <coughs> the shadows are bluish not terribly certain how well this will go but uh, I seem to have liked it so far Oop, not anymore but yeah, this is what I said by, this is what I meant when I said that there is a lot of back and forth and trial and error. I'm guessing that some people can just imagine a design and then paint it as it will be in the final version. I think that this is something to strive for, because at the very least it saves you a lot of time. But I don't think that this is a skill that's easily attainable. So unless you put in the hours and time after time after time of sometimes failed, sometimes successful experiments, I'm guessing that you don't get the ability to, to produce successful result, results from the get-go. It's just a matter of practice and your brain remembering what you've done until it becomes routine. It's just like filling up your visual library as people say that you should do and they're completely right. In order to become a good designer, if you haven't looked at a lot of cars, for example, there is no way that you're going to be able to design an interesting brand new never before seen car. Because what you probably have in your head to go off with it, to go off from is just the very basic generic idea of a car. And it's nothing really exciting. And it's only once you get your head full of all kinds of different cars, old and new and futuristic and like all kinds of different design languages, straight shapes, curved shapes, smooth shapes, hard shapes, you, you won't be able to produce anything that's really new or interesting and that's just the way it is in my opinion with painting itself and like with everything actually unless you've tried it time and time and time again the chances of you getting it right from the first time are proportionately smaller So by now you've noticed probably that I've painted quite a lot of things that I repainted again and again and again. And that's just a part of the process as I said earlier. You should be able to discard work that you thought was maybe already done. Because during the work process it often turns out that you didn't make the best possible decision and it really helps if you're just able to start from scratch on a new iteration instead of trying to save what was done, what little piece of it you might still like. Because in my experience it it always turns out that you, you'd waste more time trying to save this little piece of work than you should start from scratch, so don't get too precious with your work. As you can see, I'm 
that's that's another thing that I want to talk about. You probably noticed how I constantly move things around, change proportions and shapes and whatnot. This is again something that I'm hoping will go away with more experience. But until that moment comes, you should not be afraid of doing this. Because, hey, if you don't make it the first time, no one's stopping you from trying to make it the second time. And it's just stupid to stick to this first time just because it was the first time you tried it and it should have been successful just because you wanted it to. So, do whatever it takes to get things right. If this means starting over from scratch, then so be it. Hopefully, it will probably mean that you just have to start over on a tiny piece of the picture from scratch, but you never know. Right now, you can see one of the, I don't know, major things that I'm doing the way I paint, paint at least. I usually outline my shapes with some dark color, sometimes it's even black. And then I start putting tone in it. I find it easier than working with color blobs without any outline. Just because, it is, as I said in the beginning, an outline is the easiest way of showing your intention. And it really helps me just make my way in the painting and just orient myself in it. That's even a word. Well, anyway, now it is. Hopefully. <laughs> So yeah, right now I just keep noodling, noodling around everywhere. One thing I try to keep in mind when I'm working is to never stick too long in one area of the painting. Miles Johnston, I think, who's an awesome artist, said that when he works, he always try, tries to work on the part that's rendered the least. That's did like worked on the list, not necessarily rendered. And it makes sense because if you it's really easy to get stuck in detailing some tiny part of the picture and forget about everything else, but then you then you find that this really detailed part of the picture is disconnected from everything else it looks like completely different like part of a completely different picture and this isn't a situation you want to get yourself into and also if you really do manage to work always on the part that this list developed this way you are sure that you're going to constantly have a that you're going to have a consistently developed piece throughout, regardless of the stage of work that you're in, and you won't just have a really rendered head and colored blobs for body, or for everything else other than the head, actually. And among other things, this makes your whole piece easier to judge even for yourself. Because if you're surrounded by the ambiguous information, making the right decisions is a lot harder, I think. So, just try to, to move the whole picture along. Don't do as I do. You'll notice probably that I've worked on quite a lot of areas in the picture, but he still doesn't have any feet. 
also his, his hand is still hovering in midair which is not going to change to the very end of the picture but at least I have an idea that he'll be holding a huge axe ha, like huge axe funny so anyway <coughs> again you can see my approach with detailing things with dark outlines and then getting to rendering the forms though yeah I'll get to rendering those quite a lot earlier in the pro later in the process but yeah it illustrates the way I work I try to come up with some fancy designs it's a shame they probably well not probably they're hardly visible by the end of it, but still, it, I like coming up with different ornaments, and just little pictures within the picture. And it can be really fun when you're working on a really complex character, especially when you're modeling it. Because as annoying as all those things might be to model, they really do bring life to the character, so there's not something to overlook of course the fundamentals are a lot more important so even if you have the most beautiful and whimsically designed ornaments on a like they can't save a, a really bad design or a badly structured drawing so you should get your priorities straight yes but sometimes you can just indulge yourself, work on the little things before you've gotten there, before their time has come, because ideally you should work, on, you should detail your picture like at stages, you should bring all the picture to a certain stage of detailing until you proceed to the next stage with again the whole picture but sometimes you just want to treat yourself to some tiny details, ornaments, rivets, whatever or even rendering that face that you really like so much so yeah, nothing of those things that I'm saying is set in stone or even necessarily right for that matter but there are things that work for me so yeah, again here you can see me trying out things and correcting the poses that I've noticed might be wrong and they are still I don't manage to correct it until the very end almost at least I'm trying and again you saw that the whole body was more or less rendered and I suddenly decided to to change the position of the legs and arms and those are things that you can do at every part of the process you just just have to do them when they when it's needed to it's it's a lot better to waste a lot of time fixing something than leaving it wrong consciously because yeah this way it will always be wrong and if you try to fix it at least there's a chance that it will stop being wrong which is always better here you can see me trying out the future detailing this isn't the same as in what I was talking about earlier in doging in rendering ornaments and whatnot it's more exploration but yeah that's that's something I usually do as well I make a few layers like this where I mark the position of future elements that will be included in the picture so that I 
I can just keep them in mind while working on everything else. And usually it's things that are on top of everything else. For example, it might be a belt that goes on top of every other layer of clothing and everything and a lot of other tiny elements and it's just a lot easier to keep it for the very end so you can just easily paint it on top of everything instead of putting it there in the beginning and painting around it all the time it's kind of like when you're painting environments it's a lot easier to paint the background first and then paint the midground and foreground on top of it then start with the foreground and work your way around it to paint the background which doesn't necessarily mean that I always do this but at least I'm trying all this makes me think of how easy it is to know a hell of a lot of things but not put them to any good use so something to keep in mind when you're reading books and listening to advice and all those useful things try and make a point of applying what you've learned because it's all too easy to just absorb all the new information and do nothing with it and I know from experience regrettably so yeah something to keep in mind when you're doing studies or anything just think consciously about how you're going to apply this knowledge and then apply it <coughs> so on with the work here you can see me struggling with the metal because metal is terribly hard at least for me there are some people that can paint it like no problems but regretfully I'm not one of them yet another thing I'm not good at yay but I'm hoping to make enough studies and eventually become good at it so here's a point if you're not good at something try practicing it deliberately and mindfully and eventually you become good at it at least that's how I've learned to do whatever I can do so if you're one of those people that for example want to learn to paint, and paint environments but then just say that all oh, environments are hard I really want to paint environments but I can only paint characters and just start trying because you're not going to learn to paint better environments by continuing to only paint characters just as I'm not going to learn to make better metal by not painting any metal so just <coughs> identify your problems and deliberately work on them which I'm guessing is valid advice for life in general Ha, look at me being a life coach. Ooh. And still rendering things. Yay. Here you can see I tried to introduce some just other different colors into the piece that I was rendering, the metal disc on the dog's belly on its waist I'm not terribly sure they work but so far I don't seem to mind them and again going back to less refined areas and fixing them, trying to fix them at least exploring possible solutions with line and then applying tone to see if they work or not and I can't stress this enough 
because at times I have the the impression that there are trends in working in painting for example when a hip new artist arrives and people see that for example he works only with line or he starts he starts his work with a really detailed line drawing and then applies washes of color over it and a lot of people start to try emulating their workflow which isn't bad in itself but having been there I think that it can be really bad if you're just trying to do it for the sake of coolness because as you all probably know what works for one person might not be the best approach for another and I've been in this situation plenty of times when I've tried to learn to work a certain way just because I think it's cool and it turns out that I'm consciously hindering my progress because for example, people kept telling me at some point that you start making better faces if you just spend time in the beginning and measure things, construct everything carefully instead of just trying to nail it for, from the first time, for the first, from the first try because you just saw someone famous on the internet do it like this and even when I thought that yes this is probably a skill those people acquired after years and years of practice I still kept thinking that I'm somehow cool enough to be able to reproduce their results without all those years of practice as if no one else had ever thought had ever thought of that and it just didn't occur to me that no I'm not cool enough so I should spend the time practicing until I become able to do those fancy tricks that people so like so much so yeah you can see that the picture is coming along I think I really like how I twisted the belts because it's a small detail but it gives character and it's um, it's a way of thinking that I think really helps when you're designing or just making a character you should just put yourself in their shoes so to speak and just try to think of every little thing on them and what you do with it if you were in their place. For example, if you're some guy with a really long belt, you probably won't, wouldn't want it flapping about your legs. Who knows, maybe you would and you might paint it like this and then it will say one thing about character and then you might tuck it in somewhere, depending on where it's tucked in and how it will say a completely different thing about that character so you should not be afraid to think of those tiny details and you should definitely not shy away from doing it just because you're lazy because yes, it's a lot easier to not paint those parts of the belt at all just a lot of people wouldn't notice if you paint it without any buckles for example just a strap of leather that goes around the body like a hoop but even if you paint it from the, from the front and the back like this a lot of people will just think that when they don't notice the belt buckle they will just automatically assume that it's somewhere off camera and just don't have a problem with it but as soon as you start start thinking about those details and 
giving them the attention they deserve, you'll notice that your designs immediately become a lot more lifelike and just a lot more natural, I don't know. Just, they're just thought out to a higher degree, which always helps. So, when you're painting some character, for example, and someone with a skirt, and you come to the edge of the skirt, sure, it might just be a regular skirt with nothing special on it, no hems or trims or anything, but it might not be. And you should always think about what, would, what it would add if you added some details there, what it would say about the character and just try to come up with something that would be interesting. Because sure, it would be perfectly realistic to leave it at that, just a flat edge at the end of the piece of clothing. But it would be a lot more interesting if it wasn't like this. And after all, that's what makes a picture nice to look at. It's when it's interesting. Because everything that's generic is like it does exist and it is technically accurate and feasible. It just not interesting and that's why you as a designer should strive to to do things that are not generic and that are more interesting in general so don't be lazy and don't come up with excuses like but it's perfectly feasible that it wasn't detailed and at some point it's even acceptable to, to make something more interesting for the sake of its realism. Well, depending on what you're working on, of course, but in my opinion, it's always better for something to look more interesting than more realistic. Apply the moderation, of course, but if something looks boring, it will still look boring and people will perceive it as boring regardless of whether it really does look boring or not. So if you have a chance to make it not boring, why not use this chance? So, yeah. Just keep thinking of ways that you can make something more interesting. For example, like those golden rivets that are just painted there on the, the red scabbard. They might not be there at all. It might just have been the, the red piece without the golden parts, but those parts make it a lot more interesting. So why not add them? And also something to think about. Notice how I've painted little hooks on this cupboard that I'm painting now. And so that it can be attached with a rope that goes around the belt. <coughs> so always think of how things are put together. Because again, you could just stick it on the character's tie and a lot of people probably wouldn't notice and wouldn't think of about it. It's like you haven't shown how it stays there and even though there might be a way, there might be some hidden clasps or something to hold it in place. It's always better when you show how it does work so that you you don't make people come up with excuses for you. Just do your work and figure everything out. So, yeah. And I continue rendering. 
Okay. So we're nearing the final stages of the picture. As you can probably see. And here's that belt buckle I was talking about. See, I could have easily left it just as it was. I decided to take the time and add it. Regrettably, those parts of the picture making are usually... I, I usually always think that I'll just add a couple of small details just for the extra life and realism and I'll probably be done in about an hour and it's usually more than an hour I actually usually think I'll be done in about 20 minutes and then I come to the realization that it will probably be an hour and then it's more than an hour and then my whole evening goes away doing rivets and straps and buckles and things I actually enjoy doing but at the same time I still find very annoying to do that's life for you I guess <clears throat> for some reason I find making such hard man-made shapes really hard to do so that's why you mostly watch me struggle with them until the very end of this video which luckily is coming soon yay and again just adding little details just try to think of how would you make your scabbard of your favorite sword look more interesting if it was your if it was yours or if it was the king's cupboard for example he'd probably have people hired just to to make it for him and if you were making a scabbard for a king of course you'd want to make it a lot more memorable than just a big piece of leather or wood with nothing on it and once you look at enough real life examples you start coming up with things of your own so just when you're looking at things in real life or browsing photos or whatever just try to identify the things that make them more interesting than they could have been when you see an interesting looking shirt for example make a note of why it is interesting instead of just like any other shirt is it that it has longer sleeves or an interesting picture or who knows just think about this then it really helps Another thing that really helps is coming up with stories. For example, well, like the aforementioned shirt, if you are painting someone with a shirt, instead of just putting some generic shirt there, think of how it might be something that was given to them by their partner, or loved one or whatever why would they choose it think of how what it would say about the one that chooses it and the one it's chosen for if it's a really tight fit for example it might be that the person wearing it really likes their body and they want to accentuate it it might be that the one that is giving them to them wants to to make them feel about better about themselves or on the contrary wants to make them look funny or if for example you know that the character you're designing has body issues or is like a really buff guy that wants everyone to know that he's a buff guy this way this automatically tells you that you should design their clothing a certain way 
and those, those are things to, to always keep in mind when when working on a character or working on whatever actually never never design something to exist in just a vacuum everything you should you design should should have its story should should have been used should be able to be used as they say about animation that when you're working on a pose you should be able to tell what happened before the pose and what happens after it this it is completely the same when designing characters environments whatever you should be completely aware of what it was that made the things that you're painting look the way they do so that they make sense which is sadly often overlooked but it is important and with that i'm thinking of ending this not really tutorial just more i don't know blabbing on and thank you for looking hopefully it was fun or at least useful or maybe not annoying i have no idea i hope that you got something out of it and if you did i'm really happy thanks for looking and have a great day night whatever it is that you like and um, stuff and I really have no idea what to say so bye